What's up guys, it's your boy Damone and welcome back to another Genshin Impact video. Today we're going to be doing a all character beginner build guide. Uh, we're going to go over basically all the artifacts you need, sets and set bonuses to focus on before level 40. We're also going to talk about artifacts and which types of artifacts you should get. We're also going to be covering the weapons that you should probably be forging if you guys are free to play or if you're focusing only on craftables uh, and or the battle pass uh, in this video. Before we get started though, I want to send a special shout out to my mom. Uh, she's the reason I made this video. Uh, she's my inspiration for this video. She started playing Gitchin Impact. She's over 60 and she absolutely has no clue how to build her character. So I wanted to create something that she could reference at any time and look up any character and understand the basic build. So if she gets the itch to build any character she can just by looking at the gear, throwing it in the correct slot and just going. <laughs> All right. So without further ado, guys, let's go ahead and dive on in. So as we get into this, guys, there's a couple of things that I need you to understand. We're going to be primarily focusing on your cup, which is this piece here. Your timepiece, whether that's an hourglass or whatever, and then we're also going to be focusing on your helmet. These are your three primary pieces of equipment just due to the fact that your feather and your flower feather will always be attack, and your flower will always, always, always be HP. In terms of substats, the substats are pretty much going to be the same across the board, including crit rate, crit damage, elemental mastery, and energy recharge as the primary things you guys are looking for. And the supplemental substats that you guys are going to look for depend entirely on your character. So whether that substat is attack is going to be dependent if your character is purely DPS and scales with attack. If your substat is going to be defense or HP, defense like Noel, your character scales off a of defense, or your character scales off of HP like Barbara. But I'll cover that when we get to those particular characters now for the sake of beginners we're going to be focusing specifically on gear pre adventure rank 40 so anything lower than adventure rank 40 because after adventure rank 40 builds and all that stuff gets super duper complicated and i don't want to over complicate things for you guys or my mom uh, so we're just gonna again focus on gear and setups before adventure rank 40. so first off guys we got deluke all right so basic starter build you guys are looking at attack percent for his helmet you guys are looking at attack percent for his timepiece, and you guys are looking at attack percent for his cup. All right, all three of those just basic starter build. In terms of recommended weapons, if you guys are doing the craftable weapons, I recommend Prototype Aminus, or you guys can use the BP 2 end Sword. Both of those I think are really ideal for starter characters, especially if you guys bought the Battle Pass. If you guys are looking to get to, into more advanced builds, I recommend attack percent. Pyro bonus damage on his cup and attack percent due to the frequency that Deluke is going to be using his elemental attacks. If you guys are getting even more advanced, once you get Deluke's crit rate to 50% or above, you guys can opt to switch to an attack percent, attack percent, and a crit damage build on his helmet artifact. So you can put crit damage percent on his artifact. Now ideal gear sets pre-40 are going to definitely be Gladiator and or Berserker unless you guys are looking to get into more like an Exiles build just to increase his energy recharge to spam his ult. I think Berserker is a really really nice starter to help get that early crit rate though and Gladiator is a nice transition that you can use up until level 40. As we get into Gene, let's knock out the weapon first. I recommend either Prototype Ranker for the physical damage or you guys can use Iron Sting because that works just as well. So it's kind of a coin toss. In terms of gear builds, because Gene scales off of her healing, you guys are gonna to wanna to focus on an attack, attack, attack build initially. If you happen to get an Anemo bonus damage drop, you can definitely put that into the cup slot if you guys are looking to deal bonus damage on her ultimate and or her E or her R2 for those of you guys who are on PS4. If you guys are looking for more of a support healer build and you're not using Jean as a primary DPS, I recommend going healing bonus on her helmet and it's still running with attack percent, attack percent. If you guys are looking more for physical damage so you guys can maximize her heal potential off of her basic attacks, then I recommend going attack percent, physical bonus damage, and then attack percent on her other main piece of gear. Ideal sets for Jean include Gladiator and Berserker, of course, for DPS, or Exiles if you guys are looking to spam her ult more frequently to keep your team alive. Also, I forgot to mention that Jean can use the Battle Pass weapon as well. It is probably one of your best choices. 
As we get into Mona, things change quite a bit, uh, just due to the fact that most of her damage relies solely on elemental power. So when you get into this, I can recommend that you guys utilize an attack, attack, attack build with a Mappa Mare weapon focus if you guys are looking for craftables and or the Battle Pass weapon. In terms of a more advanced build, you guys can get into attack percent, hydro bonus damage for her cup, and attack percent for her last stat. Again, I mentioned the substats at the beginning of the video for the primary focus are still attack percent, crit rate, crit damage, energy recharge, and elemental mastery. So make sure you guys continue to focus on getting those extra stats as you guys look for better and better gear. In terms of gear sets, I think Exiles is probably your best bet. Maybe even mix with Wanderer's Troop and or Instructors just so you guys can have the elemental mastery and the energy recharge due to the fact that Mona's damage is eventually going to scale with her energy recharge. The same thing is going to apply to Sucrose who is also going to have more emphasis on elemental mastery due to the fact that her swirl effect is going to be used to combo most of the time. In terms of weapon you will still go with Map of Mare here just because it's just a better choice I feel overall in my opinion. And in terms of gear sets, you guys are also looking for the attack percent, attack percent, and a Nemo bonus damage on her cup. As we get into Chi Chi, we're back into melee world with the close quarters hand-to-hand -hand combat from this little short one. <laughs> the big thing here is she can heal and her heal scale off attack. So a basic build here, you can run attack, attack, attack. Or if you guys are looking for more of a physical damage bonus, you can go attack, physical damage bonus on the cup, and attack percent for the last part. Now you could definitely go cryo bonus damage for the cup, however due to the fact that our cooldowns are pretty long, I think that there's just a lot of time in between utilizing her abilities. So I think the physical damage is definitely a viable build if you guys are looking to maximize her basic attack damage. If you happen to get Chi Chi's crit over 50%, you can definitely opt to go a crit damage helmet um, if you guys are looking for just raw damage. However, keep in mind that the more attack Chi Chi has, the more effective she'll be as a healer. Now ideally you guys are looking at an exile set if you guys want to maximize your energy recharge to so use your ultimate quicker or you guys can maximize on DPS to go with like a, a berserker and or gladiator set. Also one thing to mention in terms of her build you can also utilize healing bonus on her helmet plus attack percent on the other two pieces if you want to maximize her healing output. Now in terms of weapons Chi Chi is pretty versatile so you can get away with using iron sting or prototype ranker for crafting it's just entirely up to you or you can use the battle pass weapon. Now as we get into the archer class here with amber things are going to change quite a bit. Amber has a variety of ways that she can be built just due to the fact that she's an archer and she relies on elemental damage sometimes, and she also relies on physical damage. So with that, you could focus on a purely physical damage build, focusing on spamming her basic attacks, in which case I'd recommend the compound bow, just for the attack speed increase for craftables. And in which case, if you guys are opting for a more basic attack spam build, then you guys definitely could go attack, attack, attack for the basic attack percent, physical bonus damage and attack percent for a more advanced build or if you guys are focusing on the elemental basically spamming her ultimate by utilizing energy recharge if you guys decided to build her on a exile set then you guys can go with attack pyro damage on her cup and attack percent on her final piece. As we get into Beto, let's start this off by saying that I think that Prototype Aminus is the best way to go in terms of Beto. That extra attack power plus the way that she deals damage off of her counter just makes her a beast. In terms of recommended builds, I recommend a raw attack, attack, attack build for starters. You can move into attack, physical damage attack just due to the fact that her cooldowns are a little bit longer. Or you can spec into attack percent electro bonus damage attack. Another situation here is if she does have over 50% Crit rate, you can definitely run with the crit damage hel helmet here as well. Keep in mind, in terms of ideal sets, you guys are either looking at Exiles for the energy recharge, Instructors for the elemental mastery, if you guys are looking to combo Beetle quite a bit, or you guys can rock with the generic Gladiator and or Berserker set to maximize the raw physical damage capability. One more thing to mention with Beto that I almost forgot is the Battle Pass two-hand sword is also amazing for her. Now, as we get into Bennett, things get a little interesting, because Bennett has a lot of different roles and a lot of different ways that he could be played. In terms of weapon choice he has versatility here as well just like Chi Chi so with this you can go with Iron Sting, Prototype Ranker and or the Battle Pass one-handed sword as well to maximize on heal output. 
In terms of Bennett, you can run a triple attack build just like every other hero for a basic starter, or you can run attack, pyro, damage, attack. If you guys are looking to maximize on his E or his R2 for my PS4 players, you could also focus more on a high energy recharge build if you wanted to just focus on ult spamming to utilize his heal. Now keep in mind that Bennett's heal actually scales with his max HP. So the more HP Bennett has, the better off the heal will be. And you also want to keep in mind that there's an attack bonus that's given based on Bennett's base attack if the characters in the field are over 70% HP. So understanding that, you guys know that you, no matter which way you guys decide to build, whether attack percent and or HP, these are stats that you guys will need. Pure healer build focus Bennett will need all the HP you can get with some attack. DPS build Bennett will still need some HP so you can maximize the heal. You can achieve this by looking for these particular stats in the substat category. If the heal is just for looks for you and you just want some extra survivability but your primary purpose is damage, then you're going to start to look at attack, physical damage, attack, and or attack, crit damage, attack again if your crit rate is over 50%. In terms of ideal builds, you're looking at gladiator, same thing, pretty much all of the melee builds, and of course berserker to maximize his crit rate. And again, moving into Exiles if you guys are looking for the energy recharge. As we talk about our first healer, which is Barbara, the weapon for her is pretty clear cut in terms of crafting, and that is Prototype Malice. Now, you definitely could go with the Battle Pass weapon, but I think Prototype Malice is just in terms of overall survivability and adding to keeping your team alive, especially if you want to keep Barbara in a pure healer position. Um, Prototype Malice can be a very, very helpful weapon for her. Now, if you guys are opting to go the DPS route, then you guys can definitely go with the Battle Pass weapon as well, uh, with the emphasis on the triple attack build or adding Hydra bonus damage to her cup. If you guys are not going with the DPS Barbara I'm Killing the World build, then you guys are going for more of a support. Then your primary focus is just going to be on getting as much HP as you can while bringing healing bonus to her helmet. Now, in terms of ideal builds, I recommend Exiles just for the energy recharge and the ult spam. Or if you're running DPS, I recommend Instructors and or Wanderers Troop for the Elemental Mastery for comboing. As we get into Venti, Venti is another archer. However, in this case, because of Venti's utilization of his elements so frequently, I recommend one of the real only ways to build him early on is just going to be attack, Anemo bonus damage, attack. The emphasis is going to be on getting his elemental mastery and his energy recharge as high as you possibly can. And you could do that by combining sets of Wanderer's Troop, using a two piece from Wanderer's Troop, and then using a two piece of Exiles or Instructor. However, if you're unable to get the Wanderer's Troop, being the fact that you really can't get it until 25 plus anyway, then just focus on running a full instructor set and or exile set to get the bonuses. In terms of weapons for Venti, I think the compound, the compound bow or the BP bow is a great option uh, for this particular character, especially the battle pass bow is really, really good. Uh, but that's going to be all up to you. As we get into Singh, uh, Singh is a melee fighter um, who you can build following the standard attack, attack, attack build or attack hydro bonus attack or attack crit damage attack, again, if your crit rate is higher than 50%. Ideal weapons include Prototype Ranker. With Sing, because of his versatility, you can choose Prototype Ranker, Iron Sting, and or the BP weapon here. Either way, it's entirely up to you. Ideal gear sets include Exile for the energy recharge for the old spam for team combo support and or gladiators and or berserker if you're looking for solo DPS potential. As we get into Faisal, Faisal is going to be attack percent Electro bonus damage and attack percent, which I feel is really the safest way to build her early on. If not, you can still rely on the attack, attack, attack build, but try to switch to electro bonus damage as soon as you possibly can. The reason I say this is because the amount of times Faisal is relying on electro bonus damage is really going to be the thing that sets your Faisal apart. In terms of weapons, I recommend going with the compound bow or and or the battle pass bow. Just because I feel like just those are the best options, I don't anticipate you doing any charge shots, so, so you won't really need the other bow from the craftables. In terms of builds, because Elemental Mastery is very, very important to comboing with Faisal, even more so than Energy Recharge, because her ult is basically just bringing out Oz again. It's just like a pumped up version of her E ability. 
So focus more on the elemental mastery. So I think Instructor's Wanderer's Troop can be good. But if you still want the energy recharge to spam bird, then you can definitely go Exiles as well. In terms of MC or main character, you guys can build this guy like any other typical melee. Attack, attack, attack. Mm -hmm. Attack crit damage attack if the crit rate is above 50. Or you can go with the corresponding elemental bonus damage that you're using. So you can use Geo bonus damage if you're rocking the Geo. You can go in Nemo bonus damage if you're rocking the, the Wind. The kicker though is if you want to be safe, you can just go with a just a straight across the board build with like an attack of physical damage build just to ensure that while you're basic attacking, he's doing his job. Just keep in mind this won't influence his elemental damage if you rock with the physical damage. Ideal swords for the main character, the sky is the limit. You can pretty much use whatever you want due to the versatility of the MC. Ideal gear sets include Gladiator and Berserker. As we get into Noel, things are going to start to change quite a bit. Noel, although very, very easy to use, is also one of the most complicated heroes to build. Now, the reason I say that is because she's what I like to refer to as an all-stat hero, aka a paladin. She's going to need attack. She's going to need defense. She's going to need HP. She's going to need all the stats that you need to keep her alive. So with that, I'm just going to go ahead right off the bat and say the best crafted, craftable weapon for her is just going to be White Blind. I would have probably used White Blind even over Prototype Animus or Aminus, uh, even though the damage on Aminus is really nice. The craftable sword White Blind just makes your life a hell of a lot easier when it comes to us utilizing Noel. Now, as we get into her gear setup, what I recommend early on is definitely, definitely, definitely just go for a raw damage build if you guys are trying to build her as DPS. Now, if you guys are going for a pure heal bot, then all the defense you could ever get is what you're basically just gonna build. It'll enhance her shield, it'll enhance her ult damage, it'll enhance her, her heal power. Defense will be the way to go for the heal bot. If you guys are trying to find your way somewhere in between, then just do both. If you're running an attack percent main stat, so like attack percent, attack percent, attack percent, or attack percent, physical damage, attack percent, or attack percent, geo bonus damage, attack percent, something like that, then make sure that you have defensive substats along with your crit rate and crit damage. Just make sure you offset the main stat with the other stat that you need. One thing I do want to mention though, is once you start to get into her last constellation, it increases Noelle's attack by an additional 50% of her defense, at which point it could be safer for you to just go for a full defensive build. So that's just something to keep in mind. Either way, no matter how you build her full defense, full attack, somewhere in between, she's pretty much going to need all of the stats to be successful. As we get into Kaya, the emphasis is going to be more on attack. In terms of weapon, you can literally use anything with this hero just because his cooldown times to use his abilities are very, very low. So you can go Iron Sting, Prototype Ranker, or you can go with the BP Sword as well. The kicker though is with Kaya, your emphasis is definitely going to be on your attack power due to the fact that he has a talent, Cold Blooded Strike, that every hit with his skill 2 here regenerates HP for Kaya equal to 15% of his attack. So for the pure survivability of Kaya, he needs as much attack power as possible. So with that, starter builds attack, attack, attack. More advanced builds attack, cryo damage bonus attack. And if you get his crit rate above 50%, attack, crit damage attack can work very well here as well. Ideal sets include Gladiator, of course, and or Berserker. If you guys are looking for his ult spam to maximize his cryo bonus damage, then I definitely recommend Exile set for the energy recharge. If you guys are just looking for raw damage in general, then just stick to the Berserker and or Gladiator. Once we get into Ningguang, it's really, really simple here. Map of Mare or BP weapon, plus attack geo bonus damage attack, and just let her go to work. <laughs> <laughs> no help necessary, all right? Uh, Ning Wong is an absolute boss, and that is what you're literally going to want to do. Uh, again, with the emphasis on making sure that your substats continue to grow along with this character. Chong Yun is a tricky one with, with a great sword. I recommend Prototype Aminus here for him and or the BP sword. However, his emphasis, even though he's a melee fighter, is still going to be more on the cryo bonus damage. I recommend attack percent cryo bonus damage on his cup and attack percent just overall for his build due to the sheer amount of time that you're going to be spending in an ice field. Um, due to the fact as well that he's also going to be commenting with... <laughs> Comboing with a lot of heroes, you want to make sure that he gets a lot of elemental mastery. So that boils down to the builds of looking at Instructor, 
to increase his elemental mastery and or using gladiator and or berserker while still looking for elemental mastery in his substats along with the crit rate crit damage and attack as we get into Shang Ling, you can go with either of the craftable pole arms or the battle pass weapon. Shang Ling has a lot of versatility, but I do recommend a attack pyro bonus damage and attack percent build due to the fact that you're going to be using Goba and your ult quite a bit. If you're going to be focusing on the ult spam, you're going to want to get as much energy recharge as you can while still getting as much attack, crit, crit damage, so on and so forth. Ideal sets also for her include Exiles and or Gladiator and Berserker before level 40. As we get into Kaching, One-Handed Sword, I recommend Iron Sting for her for the craftable and or the BP weapon. You can also use other weapons like Lion's Roar if you're lucky enough, but if not, just, just focus on the craftable weapon Iron Sting and or the Battle Pass weapon. In terms of ideal builds, I recommend Attack, Electro Bonus Damage Attack, Although you can get away with physical damage bonus in the cup initially. Later on, as her kit evolves and you continue to get constellations, so on and so forth, her emphasis is going to be more on elemental bonus damage. Ideal gear sets include pretty much anything. You can run instructors if you're looking for combo damage. You can run exiles if you're looking for old spam. You can run gladiators if you're just looking for raw damage. Or you can run berserker if you're just looking to increase her crit and her damage output capability. It's ultimately going to depend on what you want your Kaching to do. If you're comboing with teams, please use instructors. If you're just spamming ult because she's your only built character, Exiles might be the best for you. And then the easiest way, of course, is just to use the Berserker set because Gladiator is a little tough to come by early on. Razor is a little interesting and his build is going to change as he evolves. <sighs> Razor uses attack, electro bonus damage, and attack primarily, but I will say that you can get away with using attack, attack, attack in the beginning, just due to the fact that Razor's simplicity makes him easy to latch onto and use. However, as he evolves, one thing I want to bring your attention to is when you get into his last constellation. When you get to this last constellation every 10 seconds, he basically is going to cause his next normal attack to release lightning that deals 100% of Razor's attack as electro damage. Due to that fact, he's going to deal a lot more electro bonus damage and so you'll need that extra bonus damage to maximize his elemental attacks. Not to mention that if you're going for energy recharge, let's say on an Exiles build, he's going to be utilizing his ultimate with the wolf quite frequently and you want to take advantage of that situation. Attack, attack, attack for the basic build, attack, crit damage attack if you guys have crit rate over 50%, and attack, electro bonus attack if you guys are maximizing the electrical damage. Ideal weapon for this guy is going to be the BP sword and or prototype Aminus. Now as we get into Lisa guys, last but not least, this is going to be simple, cut and dry, attack, attack, attack for basics, attack, electro bonus attack for more advanced build to maximize your damage output. You're going to want to make sure that you get a lot of elemental mastery and energy recharge so she can keep her ult consistent, being the fact that her ult is stationary and strikes lightning to targets that enter it. You want to have this ability up as frequently as you can, along with some elemental mastery if you're utilizing Lisa as a support so she can come in, use her ult, start shooting lightning, and then you could chain with other heroes that you may have built. I recommend Exiles and or Instructor Set or maybe even Wanderer's Troop for this particular hero, again with the emphasis on the things that I mentioned before. In terms of weapon, you guys are looking at Map of Mare and or the Battle Pass weapon to ensure she's dealing the most damage possible. That concludes the video. <laughs> this was a longer one. I wanted to kind of just put this, you know, because my mom, she like watches my videos in the background and she just kind of listens to them. So I wanted to explain this kind of in a systematic approach so she could just like look at it and then match it with the item. Look at it and say, oh, okay, this is the item that I need and place it into the gear slots. So hopefully this is able to help you guys out as well. If you guys got any questions, comments, concerns, definitely, definitely, definitely let me know in the comment box below and I'd be happy to assist. And with that being said, we will see you guys in the next video. Peace.